Oh, I have an erection this morning. Oh, oh my God. I don't want to see my penis bending. Hello my friend, welcome back to Chatterdocs. I'm Dr. Tor and I'm an internal medicine physician. And I believe learning about health and medicine does not have to be boring. So as always, if you're new here, please consider subscribing and turning on a notification so you will never miss anything. One of my urologist friends was telling me this interesting story that happened to him a few years ago. One night, a couple, a husband and wife, were brought to the ED at the same time. The wife had a head laceration and fracture and the husband had a penile fracture. So apparently the wife had seizures disorder and like you know they were having oral sex and all of a sudden the wife is having a seizure attack as a result her jaw is locked down on the guy's penis and then poor guy didn't know what to do because she wouldn't let go so he took the lamp and hit her in the head with the lamp hence her head laceration and fracture fortunately the woman's head laceration was not so serious but the guy had to go through surgery for his penis such a delightful story penis is an incredible and versatile organ you can use it to urinate and also it gives you the ability to urinate while standing which comes in very handy in certain public restrooms you can use it to perform sexual intercourse and pass on your DNA to your next generation and also other weird stuff that people do with their penises. It is very unique and versatile in the sense that it can switch between inactive state to active state or erect to perform its function the best. The human penis does not have any bones, unlike other mammals like certain type of monkeys, chimpanzees and gorillas who have a bony penis called baculum. Even raccoons have a baculum that looks like this. I don't know, maybe they need their penis erect at all time because they can't wait for it to erect or they're having sex all the time. I don't know. But anyways, back to human penis. There's three cylinders in human penis. Two of them are called corpus cavernosum or corpora cavernosa in plural form, which contain a spongy tissue that can erect and enlarge if the blood flow through them. And the third cylinder contains urethra or the urine pipe. Now what is penile fracture? These three cylinders in the penis are covered by an expandable sheath called tunica albuginae. Now when the penis is erect, there's a lot of tension on this tissue, which makes the penis susceptible to injuries, meaning that if a bending force happens, then pop, that tissue can rupture. So in a sense, the fact that your penis is not erect at all time is kind of protective because usually these fractures cannot happen to a flaccid penis. Well, of course, it also saves you from the embarrassment of walking around with erect penis. Although if everyone had an erect penis at all time, then it would be normalized. That would be very funny. <laughs> they had to make some modifications to the clothes and everyone would know your size. I'm thinking my African-American folks would have some logistic problems getting on a train or, you know, it would be funny. Do gorillas walk around with an all-time erect penis because they have a bony penis? I should watch King Kong again. Imagine that huge gorilla going around with something just, ah. This is supposed to be a medical show. Penile fracture is a rare but very dramatic incident. As I said, when that outer sheath is broken, blood starts oozing around and it usually makes a big bruise on the penis, which makes it look like an eggplant. If this happens to you, my friend, I'm sorry, but this is an emergency, you should seek help. Now, what are the symptoms of penile fracture and how would you know that you have it? Well, first off, you will hear a popping sound or snapping sound. Secondly, you'll have pain and then you'll see that you lose erection and then your penis start having a big bruise on it. You could also see how it's bending. Oh my God, it's just too painful to talk about. I hope this does not happen to any of us, but better be prepared. You could also see blood oozing out your penis and you could have difficulty urination or bloody urine if your urethra is also ruptured. How does penile fracture usually happen? As I said, blunt trauma to a flaccid penis usually won't cause penile fracture, but when it's erect, the stretch and tension makes it susceptible to trauma. It usually can happen in a vigorous sex when the woman is on top, aka cowgirl or the reverse cowgirl, and then the penis slips out and the woman sits on it with all her weight. This is a very common cause of penile fracture. Or sometimes if you have erection in sleep and you roll over your penis, then it might happen. Now, if you don't want to tell your doctor how it happened, this one seems to be a good excuse. It reminds me of one of my patients years ago who was a clergyman, unmarried, who was not supposed to have sex out of marriage, but I think they happened to have it all the time so he came to the ER with broken penis and when I asked him what happened he said oh, I was walking and then my penis got stuck in the door 
I'm like, bro, were you walking erect all naked and home and then your dick got stuck in the door? The hell, man. If you want to lie, make up a better excuse, okay? Now, I'm not saying it's not possible, of course, if you're naked and you have an erection and then you're somehow blind and walk into a wall or, I don't know, slam the door on your penis, the fracture could happen, but the chances of that circumstance is very, very slim. It also can happen with forcible masturbation. In some parts of Iran, they practice something very crazy called taqandan, which is cracking the knuckles of your penis. Say what? So when they wake up in the morning, they're like, hmm, it's a beautiful day. What should I do today? Oh, I have an erection this morning. Oh, oh that was refreshing. Mm. Now I'm gonna get my coffee. Mm. In the Kermanshah province of Iran, there's a very high incidence of penile fracture because of that. They sometimes do it out of habit or, or to suppress an unwanted erection, although a little too harsh for that or sometimes to increase the size of penis. And I also heard from local people that sometimes they do it and when they hear the popping sound, it's a sign of maturity. And then of course they have to go to the ER. Which brings me to the treatment. What is the treatment for that? Now, if this happens to you, my friend, go straight to the ER. Because if you wait on it, it might give you erectile dysfunction. So if you don't want ED, go to the ED. That was a terrible joke. Now, when you see your doctor from the history and physical exam, they might have the suspicion for penile fracture, but they could order some imaging studies as well, like an ultrasound or an MRI of your penis or injecting dye into your urethra to see if the urethra is also affected or not. And what is the treatment for penile fracture? Well, it is a fracture, but the treatment for that is not brace or casting because we're not talking about a bone here. The treatment is emergent surgery where the urologist open the penis up and then stitch the tunica albuginae back together. Well, after the surgery, you might need to stay in the hospital for one to three days and then the healing process might take weeks to months and usually for the next month you should refrain from having sex or masturbation. In 90% of cases the outcomes after the surgery is good but patients could rarely experience side effects like erectile dysfunction, a curved penis or painful erections all of which will ruin your sex life. Thank you for watching my friend I know it wasn't the most delightful subject to talk about but I hope it was informative and entertaining to you so he took the lamp and hit her in the head with the lamp. <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's not supposed to be funny. If you liked it, don't forget to hit the like button and share this with your friends. And you can watch my other videos right here.